universities would like oh, ministers to no longer have the power to get involved in telling them what research they can and can't get involved with. Now, that might be the headline of things, but the reality is, is that universities have found very cute little ways to set up relationships with places like China to be able to uh, fund their research, to co-work on their research here. And recently, uh, uh, rules were put in place uh, that a minister could overrule these things. Seems common sense to me, Corey, but the university sector, well, they're trying to turn it into a quote-unquote election issue that no-one will care about apart from the vice-chancellors of Australian universities. You're spot on there, Paul. No-one will care about this because... The universities have done themselves an enormous disservice. Let's remember the, the minister vetoed a few really, really dumb artsy projects that were going to do nothing to advance Australia's status in the world. Let's also remind ourselves that the Chinese had secret payments to lecturers and research programs. They've had these Confucius institutes on universities. They've been sending in, you know, uh, a whole bunch of student activists there and the universities have gobbled up Chinese cash, surrendered sort of any real uh, academic freedom uh, or freedom of speech on campus and are generating and churning out a bunch of basket-weaving basket cases who are not fit for employment. And they kind of want the Australian punters to get behind them and say, yeah, more of the same, please. And finally, before I throw to the rest of your panel, Paul, They've clocked up $80 billion worth of student debt. $20 billion of it is not expected to be repaid Great. because the people can't get jobs because they haven't been trained properly, Paul. Great point. Well, the person from Universities Australia here, they've urged the parliament to back a bill here, Stephen. The bill is won by the Green Senator Maureen Faruqi. So mm -hmm. the universities getting behind their political arm, the Greens, to say we should do whatever the hell we want and you should pay the bill, Stephen. Well, look, my starting position is always that uh, if the Greens are putting something forward, you really have to have a compelling reason to remotely even consider it and might vote for it. Uh, and this is just another example. I mean, the, uh, I agree with a lot of what Corey says. I mean, there's an attack on the RT programs that he's never liked. So I put that aside as a separate issue. But on the fundamental issue of the universities who have sold their uh, souls to the influx of Chinese students. I mean, if any CEO built a business model with one single overwhelming item in its supply chain for profitability, you'd be looking for a new CEO. Correct. So the universities have put themselves into a situation where the, the China situation was always going to be, it could be turned off, you know, if the Chinese wanted to. We've had a pandemic that's actually forced them to deal with this issue before the threats from China to cut off the student flow was able to be made or, or actually delivered. So universities have got a couple of strikes here that they can't be trusted to manage their own uh, business. So getting behind a Greens bill, I mean, I can't think of a better way to alienate both major political parties and advocating a Greens bill like this.